The DX Commander is a great antenna, but you know folks, after a couple of years of consistent use here in Central Kentucky, through winter, through summer, it was beginning to, uh, to sag a little bit. My verticals were becoming less and less vertical, and they weren't as, uh, as taut as they used to be. So let's take a look at what we can do about that. That's what's coming up next on El Ham Radio. Yes, folks, after over two years, I felt it was time to do something with my DX Commander. Don't get me wrong, it was working great. Uh, the ability to hop around different bands with barely a tune in between with your radio. Um, it's an awesome antenna, and for the price, I really feel like you really cannot beat it. And if you want to keep it in a more portable scenario, it works great for that too. Um, so I contacted Callum and said, hey, can I buy kind of a refurb kit for the DX Commander Classic? And he said, well, I don't really have anything like that. He said, but I've made several significant upgrades to the, the different components to that. Why don't I make you a good deal on just a whole new uh, kit, a whole new uh, Commander antenna, and you'll get all the new components, and then you'll basically have all the original components as spares, as backups. And so I decided to go ahead and go that route. So he gave me a nice little discount. And I just bought a whole new DX Commander. And uh, as we'll see throughout some of these pictures and video clips, uh, you can definitely tell where he's upgraded some of the components. Now, uh, there's maybe a couple of components where I'm not sure if you can tell they've been upgraded. But uh, I think he upgraded the clips. I know he upgraded the, uh, the bungee cord material. It's thicker and heavier and more... Uh, UV uh, resistant in some things, I believe. I uh, I know that he's upgraded the wire. Uh, mine's one of the older models, and it came back when he was selling what was known as D10 wire, Delta 10 wire, and of course now he has spec'd out and has produced DX10 wire, which uh, has a much nicer hand feel and doesn't really have uh, any memory to it and stuff. So I got 200 meters of that. I know he's made a couple of the spreader plates, the HDPE uh, spreader plates, thicker. Uh, although I didn't have any trouble with mine with the original design. And uh, just some things like that. So uh, that's what I did. I went ahead and bought a whole new kit. And you can see here that the original, uh, again, it was still working fine. But sure, after two years in the field, uh, winters and summers and all kinds of things and all the pollen. And, and there's been construction near my house for several months now. And and stuff the uh, the components had gotten kind of dirty and stuff but it was still working great folks uh, I just wanted to go over it a little bit clean it up a little bit and so uh, just bought a whole new kit and we're gonna take the old one down as we see here take it apart I'm gonna clean up all the old components and just store them away now I may I may reuse the old um, the original uh, you know 10 meter pole uh, for my 80 element uh, inverted L uh, someplace in the yard or, or be able to move it several places in the yard actually but uh, I'm going to clean everything up and just store it away uh, other than uh, some of the wires and things and uh, if I if I need to yeah I'll have some spare components for some of that stuff uh, up to and including the pole so here you can see that the the new components side by side with the older ones and and you can tell <laughs> the older ones are a little bit dirty uh, they're they're a little bit sad um, again it was working fine so that's what we decided to do we bought a whole new kit and uh, as far as assembly goes, we're going to kind of show some of that stuff, but it's pretty much the way you would put, you know, an original one together. And we did a couple of videos on that uh, originally. Uh, this is an easy kit to put together. Uh, don't be in a hurry, but uh, a little bit of crimping, a little bit of uh, trimming of wire, maybe some lightweight soldering. There, there's not that much to it. Uh, some careful measuring. And a little bit of patience, and, and that's really all it takes. So uh, we've got some videos on that. Of course, Callum has a whole bunch of videos on working with his antennas and putting them together and so forth. So we got all the components ready to go. We cut the, uh, the tubing to go on the hose clamps, uh, or uh, as uh, he likes to call them, jubilee clamps. 
and we've got all the uh, the nuts and, and washers and wing nuts and things put together. So we got all the prep work done uh, pretty much on one day, uh, and then we came back and uh, put the elements up. Now what I decided to do as far as the elements, even though I've got the, the new DX10 wire, I decided to use three of the elements over because there's nothing wrong with them, uh, even though it's the old D, D10 wire. But I decided to change my... 10 meter, 6 meter uh, elements. We'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, here we're comparing some of the plates. Now, a couple of these plates are thicker than they were originally. Not not all of them, but I think the uh, the base plate, and I know the, the top uh, eye plate uh, is a little bit thicker. Again, I never had any trouble with mine. Of course, I don't push high power. Uh, you know, I think this is rated for 1,500 watts for 60 seconds or something. Uh, I just run a, a, you know, a barefoot 100 watt receiver. So never had any problems. Uh, severe winds. We've had a number over over two, two and a half years, a number of um, heavy winds and things. Never had a problem with it. Uh, these are my original elements. Again, I decided to reuse the 80, 40, and 20, the 10, and the 6. I originally built those kind of as a whim, uh, spur of the moment, and I didn't have a lot of wire left. So I made them as, as quarter, uh, but I decided as, since I was redoing the antenna that I was going to redo them as 5 eighths. Uh, and actually just longer than 5 eighths. Instead of 0.62, I was going to go 0.64. Uh, some people like that a little bit better than, than true 5 eighths. And, uh, and just try that. Uh, now, I don't have them up in the air kind of the way they should be. So they're just off the ground. Uh, I could get, I got a little bit off 6 meters. Uh, very, very <laughs> little off 10 meters. So I'm hoping to get maybe a little more out of 10 meters. Uh, just for the fun of it. I don't do a whole lot with it, but just for the fun of it. Uh, the six meters, I've made a few contacts over the years, so it, it's been a little bit of fun. So I'm going to reuse uh, uh, the 80, 40, and 20, the, the D10 elements, because there's nothing wrong with them. And But I did make up some new uh, 10 and 6 meter with the new DX10 wire. Uh, put on the, uh, you know, the spade connector and crimped it, and also a little bit of solder. I also made up new radials. I thought I had a picture of that, but I made up new radial sets. Four sets of five radials. Uh, and, uh, and crimped the uh, the spade connector and soldered it. Uh, and so, you know, making up radials. Again, we showed that in the first video, and we've shown that in several other antenna videos as well. So here, just again, kind of comparing some of the components. Of course, the new components, nice and, and clean and shiny, uh, with a few minor adjustments. Nothing uh, in, the, in the aluminum plates, nothing real critical, I don't think, was changed. They, they looked pretty similar. Uh, you know, the hardware is, is most of it at least, is uh, stainless. Uh, plates are aluminum, so they're not really going to rust or anything. Obviously, no no problem. I'm going to clean them up. They'll clean up really just fine. I believe he's putting together the little SO239 connector a little differently than he did in the past, a little bit more uh, weather resistant, and he gives you some tape and stuff to help make that weather resistant. So here I've put on the base plate. You screw off the bottom cap. You put on the base plate, just like we did in the original build video. Um, and then the uh, the element plate, is cut the center circle is cut to fit you know above that a little ways and then use a hose clamp on it uh, and then of course the so239 connects from the the base radial plate to the uh, element plate uh, and we'll see that a little bit later i put a little liquid tape right there on that uh, that uh, connection right there just to maybe help uh, seal it from the elements uh, a little bit more and it makes a nice neat job of it uh, and uh, again, assembling it was pretty easy. You've got all new hose clamps or Jubilee clamps, some new, uh, technically, I guess it's, uh, it's fish tank hose. Um, and the way I put this on, I just slip it on the hose clamp, cut it to where I know I can still close the clamp and move on to the next one. If you want to measure every single one of those or something, there's people that do it that way. Uh, either way, it's going to work. But I just took the, the quick, easy route and just kind of eyeballed it. And uh, I think it's going to work just fine. So... Got all those ready to go, and uh, uh, the nice thing about these hose clamps, because some hose clamps, at least here in the United States, uh, are a you know a slotted type of screwdriver. These hose clamps, I believe, can take slotted or Phillips, and of course Phillips tends to be a lot nicer to work with. So that is that is nice that they they work that way. So I put some chairs out in the yard uh, or the garden, if you will, and uh, just to kind of support the antenna uh, as we're starting to put on the plates and then also begin to thread in the elements. So first we put on the plates. Uh, each one is cut to where it'll sit where it needs to sit on the pole. And you just kind of uh, hold it in place with a, a hose clamp. And then for each of the major uh, extension pole sections, you'll put a hose clamp. 
just to make sure it doesn't fall down during you know maybe some winds or something and then the last few extensions are small enough and light enough that I've never had a problem with mine uh, having them come down and they're so small you don't use any hose clamps on those but each one of these each plate and each major extension of the uh, pole you just put a hose clamp with the uh, you know the outer hose material to help make sure it's not going to damage the uh, the pole itself and then you'll get to that final uh, eyelet up there towards the uh, the top of the pole uh, this is all real easy assembly work not hard at all it just takes a few minutes if you have a nice day it's not a problem and then you can start putting on your elements and threading them through now one of the things with uh, with this is this is where you want to take your most time now we talked about this in the original uh, build video I'm reusing three of these and then I measured the new 10 meter and 6 meter uh, elements this is where you want to take your time you really want to get the the links for your elements uh, as close and accurate as you can because that means there'll be less tuning with the final product with mine most of them will will naturally fall below three to one usually below two to one um, I usually tune a brief tune when I hot bands and it's just a real brief little tune it doesn't have to do much at all with them uh, so I just use the internal tuner to the radio if you have an external tuner of course that'll work too so that's pretty much it folks we got the uh, the new refurbed antenna up it's already working great uh, we'll show some making some contacts with it later so that'll wrap it up this is Chris KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association we'll catch you in the next video which is always going to be out on Fridays and occasionally on Wednesdays well, have a good one, folks. Enjoy your radios, and we'll see you in the next video, 73.